On this episode of the Wanderings and Wool Gathering podcast, the new Soulfly is here. I play a little guitar, and we talk about raisins. Welcome to Wanderings and Wool Gathering, episode eight. Tonight's episode is going to be extremely special, but I'm not going to tell you about that right now. I am your host, Foggy, and with me as usual is T-Bags. What's up? What's going on, T-Bags? And also, JPP. What up, everybody? I got a surprise for y'all. You ready? Yeah. I'm ready. It's Metalhead Monday, y'all. He's here to hang out with us. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, what's up, Metalhead Monday? Not a lot. Enjoying my Sunday. <laughs> Sweet. Metal on a Sunday. I told you it was going to be special. We got the Metalhead here. And uh, at some point tonight, we're going to be reviewing the new Soulfly. So uh, this is going to be a very excellent episode, I can tell already. Yep. Super stoked. Cool. Same here. All right. So, as usual, we're going to kick it off with our uh, weekly challenge. And uh, last week, I had the challenge. And my challenge to the guys was basically to pick your favorite soundtrack or the best soundtrack if it's not your favorite, but you deem it to be the best. So, we will kick this off tonight with JPP. What is your best soundtrack? You know... I always say I've I've learned that through the episodes I always say you know but <laughs> I struggled with this because there's so many soundtracks that I enjoy and I had to whittle it down to just one um because we have Metalhead Monday here with us today I chose a particular soundtrack more for the sentimentality of it than um being a you know a diehard fave there's there's been a couple of them the one I'm going to pick is Judgment Night oh. And ah. the reason, the reason being, is Monday and I went to the movies to see this this flick, and mm-hmm. I really don't remember the premise of the movie much at all. But I, <laughs> oh, I do. played the hell out of that soundtrack. <laughs> I, I uh, I've got the CD still in my top bin where I can pull it out and listen to it at any time. <laughs> as a matter of fact, uh, great track listings for those that may have never heard it before. There are great collaborations. Helmet and House of Pain do Just Another Victim. It's a great opener for the soundtrack. My favorite. Teenage Fan Club. Yes, that's one of my faves as well. Teenage Fan Club, De La Soul, Living Color, Run DMC, Biohazard, and Onyx. I mean, nice. hello. Uh-huh. Perfect pairing. And you can't go wrong with Slayer and Ice-T. So, um, you know, just the fact that those two genres at the time were, you know, a little divided. You know, you had your metal heads and you had those that liked R&B, hip hop, rap and that kind of thing. And so there really wasn't uh, too much of a mesh back then. But the fact mm-hmm. that those two those two genres were able to come together and and put together uh, a nice marriage of music, if you will, um, really came came together nicely. Uh, you know, also, um, you know, some honorable mentions that uh, I really considered was the soundtrack from The Piano by Michael Nyman. There's some great piano arrangements on there, great you know music across the board. And I found myself really enjoying that. <laughs> What's funny is I remember the day I bought that soundtrack, I also br- bought an album by the band Propane, too, so two completely contrasting mm-hmm. styles <laughs> of music. But um, I found that uh, it was just really opened my ears to a lot of different ways chords and notes worked besides the the chunky riffs that i was listening to and of course i can't go without mentioning at least the crow soundtrack from the fact that monday and i saw that movie gosh we went probably yes. a half a dozen times to the theater to see it and and i loved the movie don't get me wrong but just hearing the music at that time was part of that too hey yeah, paul man. hey paul i just yeah. i just want to let you know that only tony gets to break the rules around here so teabags gets multiple entries we don't <laughs> No, yeah. cheater. I will. The... I will say uh, the Judgment Night was one of my honorable mentions, but I did not choose that. This is just chaos with everybody having multiple. Well, mentions. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's it's music. Things get kind of muddy around That's here, true. so you, you gotta you gotta have the conversation because all yeah. of that at that time was coming out, and it's just hard to pick just one. And you all know that. Yeah. Did that? Um, <laughs> you mentioned Ice T on there. Was that pre body count? What did you do? You do you know when he uh, kind of did that? No, it was not. Okay. I uh, I'm not sure when the first body count album came out, but I know. 
on his album OG Original Gangsta, which I believe was 90 or 91. That mm. was the first body count track. But okay. I don't know when the first album came out. Uh, okay. Body Count was released March 31st, 1992. Okay. I just wondered if maybe, like, you know, him doing that collaboration spawned a heavier side or how that worked, but I couldn't remember the timing. Yeah, and then uh, Judgment Night came out September of 1993. Okay. Excellent choice, Paul. That was nice, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. All, All right. right. Uh, well... Metalhead, this is your first night on the show, but you're up next. Sweet. Okay, well, uh, I had to think about this one for a little bit. <clears throat> a couple popped into my head right away, one of which was Judgment Night, as I said. Uh, I did not go with that. Um, sticking with uh, my Metalhead roots, I went with the soundtrack to the awesome movie, one of my all-time favorites, Stand By Me. <laughs> yes nice choice so yeah so <laughs> super heavy yeah so stand by me came out in uh, 1986 uh, i believe it was early in the year which would have made me nine years old and i've loved that movie ever since uh you know there's a lot of cursing in there so you know i don't know what my parents were doing but i was watching that movie um and uh at that time, I was kind of developing my own taste in music. You know, I listened to a lot of stuff with my dad and whatever was around the house. Um, and the way they used that music in the movie really kind of sucked me into the movie. I think more than just watching the movie on its own, you know, like it mm. really, uh, it submerged you in the period of the film and it really kind of uh launched my lifelong love that i've had of oldies like 50s 60s music uh later which later in life led to i i'm a huge 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 fan of like the rockabilly sound mm -hmm. which came directly out of the 50s um so yeah, and I there's a lot of a lot of stuff that I like that I can trace directly back to Stand by Me. So wow. that's kind of it's just always been one of my favorites. Love the movie, love the music, and uh, it never gets old. Never gets old. Right on. And nice. On that oldies note, I would also like to say that soon after that. Uh, my mother, I used to go grocery shopping with her at Marsh, and at the time, they released a series of cassettes. They would put out, like, maybe a couple every week, and they were all oldies, all 50s and 60s, and I think there were, like, 14 of them. I still have them in the cases they came in. <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, I've always loved oldies. And I mean, that bled over into around the same time, like La Bamba came out. Another, you know, love that stuff. So, uh, yeah, Stand By Me, that's where I landed. Uh, and Stand By Me itself might be almost the perfect song. It is Agreed. amazing. It's emotional. It's, I mean, the production for the time was out of this world. Great song, might be perfect. And I came yeah. across a killer cover of it by K.I. Theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you, man. You missed the so, cover show, pal. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you, you should go find that because it's pretty rad. And the video's a little disturbing, actually. But <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I saw that. And, uh, yeah, key, key Theory, I think, is what it goes. K.I. Key Theory, you know, Tomato Tomato. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, he, he's got some cool cool stuff out there. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he had some students from Ball State do one of his first albums, uh, like their music video for it. They uh -huh. did an After Effects project, which oh, was cool. Do, might we know someone who worked on that? <laughs> do we? <laughs> I don't know. Do we? Paul, I thought you did something with him. Well, um, actually, I, I did a remix for him. Um, it never but it did wasn't see the light that project. No, no, I know. Okay. I, I it never saw the light of day. But I reached out to him and said, "Hey, I really like this song. Would you mind if I remixed it?" And he just sent me the stems, and 
I had at it and sent it back to him and said, man, I really appreciate it. But I think at that time he was focused on getting some new material out. So gotcha. um, not mm-hmm. to be like braggart, braggart, <laughs> pat myself on the back, but uh, uh, it was I brought it up. Cool. I know, <laughs> but I'm just saying, well. um, I got to say one thing though. Let me chime in. It's funny that you mentioned stand by me because I actually made a joke about stand by me today. We, my family and I went to the children's museum, spent the day there. And on our way back, we were cutting through uh, our local park and it's notoriously known for a large pond. There's a creek that goes through, and there's tons of ducks and geese all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, past the park, and then there's this little bridge right by the ball diamond. And there were five kids, two of which had really big, thick glasses on. And oh they my were god, all kind did of... they find a dead body? No, I was saying, <laughs> I, I bet. I said, I bet they heard about a dead duck, and they're off to go see it. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they did find a dead you, body. All right. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if you guys watch Castle Rock on Hulu, but uh, it's all set. Oh, no, like, I want to see that. Yeah, it's very cool. It's a great show. But um, since they're like referencing a lot of Stephen King things in there, they and they do it very subtly. It's not gratuitous or anything. But they'll say like, you know, that's the time those boys found the body by the tracks. You know, and they just gloss over it. But right, you know, you know what they're talking about, and it's cool. And uh, not to be a braggart myself, but if I dig in the garage, I think I have a cover of Stand By Me by the California Raisins Woo-hoo. on CD. <laughs> yes. Nice. So if I find it, I'll send it over to you Monday. Sweet. <laughs> and if you thought yeah. a perfect song couldn't get more perfect, you haven't heard Raisins sing it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, well, well, hey, tea bags, you're up. Might as well just keep going on. Hey, okay. Surprisingly, I have honorable mentions, so I'll start there. Um, <laughs> obviously, I think just the era that we grew up, but um, I have a couple reasons for this. But Singles was a great uh, soundtrack. Yeah. Um, and I, what I liked about that, I think, the most was the amount of like cool bands they had on there doing, ori- doing original stuff rather than just like, let's just, let's just pull a live from Pearl Jam and put that on there, you know? And then to this day, like, Stevie and I went and saw Pearl Jam in, at Wrigley, and they played Breath and uh, State of Love and Trust, which was very cool to hear live. Um, so Singles was a great soundtrack, I thought. Natural Born Killers, I love that, as an mm. honorable oh, mention. Man. Yeah. Um, just knowing that Trent, during that uh, Mr. Self-Destruct tour, or Self-Destruct tour, um, was doing that in hotels, and then it's it's very eclectic. That's not what I expected to come from. Uh, Nine Inch Nails at the time, but to hear all those different songs. But what I liked about that was he brought pieces of the movie in the of uh, the audio into the songs, and that was yeah, pretty that cool. was awesome. Yeah, so that's my honorable mentions. But I did go with Paul mentioned this. I went with The Crow, um, not only because Nine Inch Nails is on the track, the soundtrack, <laughs> but um, I I had heard about the story uh, uh, from my friend Corey, who had given me the graphic novel ahead of time. And Steve, I don't know if you were into it. Um, but knowing that he actually, James O'Barr actually had a fiance die, you know, get killed by a drunk driver and it kind of spawned the story. Um, I thought that every song on there, I, I love the artist list. So we had like Nine Inch Nails covering Joy Division, Rollins Bands, The Cure, Stone Temple Pilots, Violet Femmes, Rage Against the Machine, Helmet, Pantera. So it was perfect for me, but to support the movie in the way that it did, which was a dark movie full of emotion, I thought every song kind of stepped up and like um, did its job for the movie. And so uh, in particular, the track that you would think I would like the Nine Inch Nails track the best, but leading off with the cure with the song burn by the cure. So good. Yeah, it is mm-hmm. so good. And that's exactly, I, I just couldn't believe it. And I couldn't get over it. And I still listen to that uh, on and off. Um, probably every month I probably hear that song in my playlist, but I'm a lyrics guy. So, you know, I love, I'm just going to read the lyrics that I love. Um, he says, don't talk of love, the shadows purr, murmuring me away from you. Don't talk of worlds that never were. The end is all that's ever true. There's nothing you can ever say, nothing you can ever do. Still, every night I burn, every night I scream your name. Every night I burn, every night the dream's the same. Every night I burn, waiting for my only friend. Every night I burn, waiting for the world to end. And I feel like, I don't know who wrote that, if that was the cure or if they got with him or whatever, but that captures when someone's gone and that that feeling of, there's no undoing it, you know? So, um, that was a great, and it was a great show too on top of it. So, uh, the cure soundtrack or the cure soundtrack, the cure leading off that soundtrack and the whole crow soundtrack was phenomenal. And the score was great as well. 
So there you go. I try to say stuff was, as fast as I can. Who was, was it? I want to say it was Graham Revel. Is that right or no? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, he did okay. the score. And yeah. uh, one of my friends, Kyle, had, I didn't even know the score existed on CD and he had it. I thought he had the soundtrack and we popped it in and, um, and it was hard to find, uh, but I loved that. And it, I could listen to both of those, either of those. You can hand me either disc. I'd pop them in and be happy. Very cool. The Crow is actually the only movie I've ever gone to alone. Really? Yeah, I remember I went and saw it twice alone. I was working midnights at Walgreens after college, and uh, friends didn't really care about seeing that, so I went twice mm-hmm. by myself and loved it. Were you, were you into anything uh, along those lines with the graphic novel? Did the graphic novel precede that, or did they do that after The Crow? The graphic novel preceded the movie. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not come mm-hmm. to that. I'm also a huge comic book fan for anyone listening. Uh, mm-hmm. I did not come to that until after the movie. and But, yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, Stevie, you issued the challenge, so what did you come up with for your answer? Well, in light of Teabag's previous answers, I have 56 and a half runner-ups, so I'm going <laughs> to nice. go through those <laughs> briefly, no more than five minutes per. But, um, no, actually... <laughs> It's funny because The Crow was on mine. Um, mm-hmm. Judgment Night easily could have been. Uh, but I added, and I said, I promised you guys I wouldn't use Star Wars for this because that would have been an easy no-brainer <laughs> for me. But didn't want to do that. Right. Uh, and okay. singles, of course, because I was of that time period as well. But I would have added a couple to that. Pretty in Pink was a runner-up. Mm-hmm. Love that one. Um, recently, The Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Those are fantastic. And mm. um, Pulp Fiction. Um, oh, yeah. Great, oh, yeah. fantastic, eclectic soundtrack. Um, I went a little bit different um, with my soundtrack and that it really is a score. Um, when I was in college, I was already a Shakespeare fan from high school, but college at IU really kind of nailed it for me. We, were, we had to watch Henry V by Kenneth Branagh, which was uh, one of his first big breakouts, uh, I think, directing and acting in a movie. And the score for Henry V was was conducted by Patrick Doyle, um, the British orchestra. It's just, uh, paired with the movie, it is simply amazing. It's it's probably, for me, outside of the iconic songs from Star Wars, it probably hits the movie better in some weird ways. Mm -hmm. Um... I know we've all heard like rousing speeches. We see people post them all the time uh, where the coach gets the team going, you know, and you kind of get into that. Then the Henry V is the ultimate. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the Battle of Agincourt? Nah. No. The British beat the French using the longbow. It was, uh, they were outnumbered 10 to 1. Okay, and this is a historical battle, but of course it's then portrayed in the movie. So the scene begins and you've got all this great drum beat, you know, preparing for, for battle. And then all of a sudden the king steps in and it backs off and it gets to this kind of low uh, music and all of the notes kind of end on a high note. So you get this feeling, you know, very positive and, uh, and energized. Um, and he delivers the most amazing speech. I'm going to give you guys the link to it afterwards in the notes. It is truly okay. incredible. It's the St. Crispin's speech, which, by the way, St. Crispin's Day is on October 25th. They're uh, Christian martyrs. But uh, anyway, so he, he builds the... Uh, the British army up to face these 10 to one odds against the French. And when he finishes, you know, ends in this big crescendo in his speech. And then we get back to the deadly serious business of war and we go back to this drum beat again. And then it ends up in this crazy flying of arrows and everything gets hectic and the music portrays that. Um, And that's just one instance within the movie that I just, to me is one of the finest pieces of cinema ever. Um, And then there's some other, uh, situations where he, it's a coming of age story. You know, he's Henry V, but he, in previous stories, he was young Prince Hal and he was reckless and crazy. And he's got a face with uh, one of his friends, uh, loots a church after one of their battles. And so he has to put him to death. And the, the music in that scene uh, is so somber and sobering. Uh, it's got these heavy, deep horns, and it's just. It's totally insane. And then the whole thing ends on a happy note where he's wooing Catherine and we get these lighter notes. And 
but you can follow it through and it really is like a roller coaster of emotion and um it it truly in my mind is perfection in a score so henry v conducted by patrick mm-hmm. boyle is my choice fantastic for soundtrack now can you listen to it uh outside of the movie oh yeah oh yeah it's okay um well, the pieces of it are on like Apple Music. I don't know about Spotify. On well, YouTube, I mean, I mean personally, personally, oh, yes. do you like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and okay. you can por- you know you know what video or what image is going on in the in the movie as you're listening to it, which mm-hmm. is cool. I mean, I think that's kind of the uh, you know if you can do that, like in Star Wars, you know when you hear the Imperial March, you know Darth Vader's coming on screen. It's kind of the same right, situation with this. You know, it, it's really awesome. That's uh, I'll have to check that out. I don't think I've heard any of it honestly. So. Yeah, I'm not familiar at all. I'll, I'll definitely have to check it out, too. And since both of you mentioned <clears throat> singles... <laughs> little riff for you there. That, <laughs> I remember when that song came out, and I was just like, wow, I, I can't wait to nab the soundtrack. And then mm-hmm. it came out on Dirt, and what a fantastic... I think it's one of their best songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh mm-hmm. hands down. It's Agreed. just... Ugh. Anyway, we're, I won't get down sentimental memory lane. Back in my day, I uh, <laughs> weird weird thing about singles for me is you guys know I love Smashing Pumpkins, but and Drown is one of my favorite songs. But it for me it just doesn't fit on that soundtrack. It almost seems hmm. like it was just a group of the time and they added it. I don't know that it really perfectly fit oh. in that movie. But I liked the song so much it was so hard. I, I couldn't say it didn't fit because I liked the song so much. I was biased. Uh, hey. Yeah. Well, if we have time, I have like one more quick uh, sure. honorable mention. And Paul, I know, is very familiar with this one. There's a soundtrack to a movie called Hideaway. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was kind of a forgotten movie, but the soundtrack was pretty uh, instrumental for me because it it's mostly like, uh, like the 90s kind of industrial sound. Mm-hmm. And that uh, really... I was getting super into that stuff, and that's that's such a great soundtrack. All the like KMFDM and a bunch oh, yeah. of other bands from Fear that Fra- time. Fear Factory's on there. there. Yes. Yep. Fear Front Factory, line assembly. Yeah. It's just, great just a stuff. machine gun. Yeah. Nice. But anyway. Yeah. Well, not to be all done. I have two more things to say now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. But I do actually have two quick things. Uh, one is that uh, since I I stayed away from scores because it, I was going with soundtracks, just my own personal like parameters to put on it. But uh, Social Network, I've talked about that before mm-hmm. on an episode, but such a great uh, score, I think. And then um, I don't even remember what the second thing was, but <laughs> I know I had two so I could outdo Jeremy. <laughs> nice. Let's see what we're doing here. Oh, yeah, no, well, I still have 53 more to go, so you'll have time to think of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Man, we've lost track on the drinking game, haven't we? We haven't even keeping score at this point. But yeah, I haven't no. said... Oh, I, yet? I haven't said the R word one <laughs> yeah. time, just so no. you guys know. But I will it's later. Coming. Yes. <laughs> you might just wait till the end when I issue my challenge. You son yeah. of a... Oh. <laughs> all right are we are we good there on the soundtracks and we have a final comment no, i think we're good all right well let's move on because we had a new album released this week Soulfly um mm-hmm. released yeah. ritual so uh, we are going to talk about that and i know um i'm not sure if we should let metalhead go first or hold him for last because i think he probably holds this a little more near and dear than the rest of us i'm down for whatever well Let's let, I think we should let Tony go first because I can just tell it's on the tip of his tongue. You ready, Tony? Yeah, well, it's not that. It's just that I, Jeremy's so excited about it and I am just, I don't really, I haven't listened to them hardly. And so I kind of wanted Jeremy to go first so that he might be able to change some of my ratings here. I did, I did tell Paul I was very interested to see what you had to say. Actually, it might have been, I don't know, it was either Paul and, and Steve or just Steve. You I'm told very me interested, well. yeah. Yeah, I, you don't strike me as a Soulfly fan. <laughs> no, but I mean, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate it, but uh, it was. It's. I mean, okay. Overall, I gave it. It almost got a three out of five for me. Uh, <laughs> so it was two point nine five when I averaged it out. Now, also asterisk. I'm bad at math, so it could have been a five. I don't know, but. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, what I really dig, here's what's hard for me, and this is what I'll be interested to hear you say, Jeremy. I'm not going to review a ton of this because I'm I'm just not, 
I read, I listened to every song multiple times, took notes, but I, it's not my thing. So, um, but every time I was like, man, I love these drums and man, I love these guitars. Mm-hmm. And that's like, then it, and it reminds me of lots of music that has that in it in, in a good way. Like it spawned things or they kind of borrow from each other, but it's good musicians. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with the vocalist either, other than there's not a lot of variance in that style of vocals that you can go with mm-hmm. in my, well, in my really ignorant opinion. So after a while, it was starting to sound the same to me vocally. And that, that's where I, and I'm a lyrics guy too. So, uh, and, and a snobby lyrics guy. <laughs> so <laughs> I was kind of like, you know, there was a couple of places where I loved lyrics, like on the first track ritual, uh, when you're facing the end, your pilgrimage begins order out of chaos, order from disorder. I loved that. I thought that was great. Then there was times where I felt like I wasn't feeling the lyrics I liked when they would tell, um, like blood on the streets. I thought that was a really solid track. Um, and, and I thought that the lyrics kind of had like a story and something to kind of rage against a little bit. Uh, ironically, I liked Soulfly uh, 11 at the end. <laughs> it was just nice. It was a really nice outro. I wish they'd kind of pepper that in more. So I think I'm used to what I listen to is things that go in and out throughout the whole album, you know, so d- change of pace and things like that. Not to say they didn't vary it a little bit. But um, I, I just came down to me uh, to vocal style, and it was harder for me to listen to straight through. And maybe that was it. Piece by piece, I could do better. But um, the music is solid, and that's actually the kind of music that I like. I like something that's like angry and driving and things like that. So uh, hesitantly and humbly saying two point nine five out of five for me. Um, but I'm anxious to hear what you guys say. Well, here, I will touch on this very quickly. Uh, uh-huh. You are not alone with the vocal thing because my wife absolutely hates Max Cavalera. <laughs> and there were often times if I would be in the room listening to Soulfly or Sepultura, she would come in the room and just go, ar, 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 ar. <laughs> So. Oh, wait, that was my garbage there. disposal. Okay. Yeah. What was that, Paul? I said that was my garbage disposal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will say there was a nice uh, Clive Barker reference on Dead Behind the Eyes with Cenobites or oh, Cenobites, Cenobites or whatever. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, um, uh, yeah. I, I'm. What I would love to do at some point. Are you a huge fan, Jeremy? Me? Oh. Yeah. I I am a mark for Max. I love. He's one of my favorites. Okay, so at the end of this, this is a separate challenge just between me and him. <laughs> uh, give me like, <laughs> give me like five different tracks. Just at some point, send me five different tracks that are like a starter pack for Soulfly. Uh, that would probably go back into when he was in Sepultura as well. That that'll work. Mm-hmm. Anything that I can appreciate, uh, I'm willing to become a fan. Right on. Okay, but we can move on past me. <laughs> All right, two point nine five. If you did the math right, got it. Yes, All right there you go. <laughs> JPP, want to hit it? Sure, sure. So Monday and I have kind of both have a, a shared history with Sepultura. Um, you know, prior to the day, well, actually, it was the days of Headbangers Ball. You know, he and I would uh, sit Saturday nights and, and watch the show. Sometimes we were on the phone silently, just watching the show and then giving ourselves commentary. Who needed yep. Facebook Live when you could just be on your own landline phone with the twenty foot cord, you know, watching <laughs> Richard? We, uh, we should sue Mike Judge for Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, so you know, we we saw what was it? Dead embryonic cells was that the first single that, uh, yeah, that was kind of yep knocked our socks off. Um, so we we kind of got to know Max through through that time, and you know they from Brazil grew up with a lot of punk and and just angry heavy uh, edge, if you will, a lot of Dead Kennedys things like that. So you know that that kind of history really is you know we're, mm-hmm. I'm partial to it is what I'm getting at. But um, this album definitely was fantastic. While I was working, I had there was three uh, songs that were kind of teasers on Apple Music, so I had them on repeat for about two solid days, and uh, really enjoyed it to say the least. But you know, Max is going to be pretty consistent. His riffing style is very punk. In fact, he only has four strings on his guitar. He doesn't even do the yeah. two thinnest strings. It's just yeah. tuned low and let it go. Um, but when, some of the things that Max does is, uh, I'll, I've got my guitar here, but he'll just make little noises. 
it's a gesture, you know what I mean? And then there's some good... Whoop. There's stuff like that where it just kind of climbs, but uh, mm -hmm. it just really grooves well with the drums. His son is on drums on this album. Mark Rizzo is the other guitar player, and that's who's doing the classical element. You're getting a lot of just real tasty pieces. And, you know, you mentioned the last track. Kudos mm -hmm. to Max Cavalera th for having some saxophone on a Soulfly album. Yeah. That right. fit really, really well. I, I, I was, was listening. like, what? I know. I was listening on the road, and I thought, man, does this shuffle to another artist? What's going on? Oh, <laughs> then I double-checked it at the stoplight, and I'm like, oh, this is great. But uh, I, I felt like, you know, Tony, I, I get what you're saying. Like, after a while, it feels consistent. But, you know, Max mm -hmm. has a style. He, he works it to the end, and um, I've just appreciated it for what it's been through the years. And, and you know, I'm going to give it a, a 4.5 out of 5 um, just for my own you know, I, right. I'm biased and I'm partial, but mm -hmm. uh, no, it was a great metal record. Uh, I love the fact that modern production makes metal so much more thicker and fuller these days. Because if you go back to their very first album, it's very low budget and very, you know, punk oriented as far as like the recording oh, yeah. style. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's in your face. I've had the pleasure of seeing Sepultura live once, and then we saw Soulfly a few years ago as well. And, you know, I, you know, Max L effect all the way, both times. <laughs> Right well, on. what's your score? Uh, I gave it a 4.5. You're such a yeah, shill. Yeah, said that earlier, Stevie. You, just, you weren't <laughs> I, listening. Oh, dang it. I do that I, I probably talked so fast, yeah. he was just like... <laughs> I thought he said he was 45. My bad. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, he's younger than me, so no. no. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Did but, I say Metamucil somewhere in there, too? Because I should. Metal Musa? Oh, right. yeah, now you're talking. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> JPP and Mundy are regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to have well, that every show. To, that's not exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> some sort of Paul music. <laughs> that's right. Uh, okay, well, I'll go ahead and pick up because I want to. I want to let Metal Ed have the last word on this. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so for sure, um, I've only known of of Soulfly for a few years, and I came to it um, in a weird way when Slipknot performs and they play the song S "Spit It Out." They do this thing where uh, Corey Taylor asks everybody to get down on the ground, and he talks for a couple minutes, and then they all jump the fuck up. And uh, start screaming, uh, you know, I'm all out of enemies. But anyway, <clears throat> so when I put that in a few years ago, um, the song came up from the 2000 album by Soulfly with the same name yep. on it, and Corey Taylor guest vocals on that. So that's kind of how I came to Soulfly. And I've been a fan, but not a huge fan, nothing like the boys over there. Um, so I at least knew what I was getting into here. And uh, so Ritual... Great song. Um, I love the Brazilian chants in the beginning. It kind of sounds gets the uh, the Native American chant kind of feel to it. And I love that they came back to that on Blood on the Street. I thought that was kind of a nice tie-in thematically through the record. I think somebody mentioned earlier, I think, Tony, you mentioned the drums. Uh, yeah. That was awesome that they gave his son uh, Evil Empowered, killer uh, you know, kick drums and speed and all that. I mean, that song really... Uh, showcased his drumming skills, which was fantastic. Um, Blood on the Streets had a really cool drum intro, uh, which I thought was really neat. And then also, uh, the song before that, Demonized, had a really cool intro as well, kind of a classical guitar feel before it hit with all those heavy chords and everything. Uh, uh -huh. So I thought there, there was a little variation there that I really liked. Uh, Bite the Bullet, I really liked that song. And um, here goes our drink... For Rush, but it just reminded me as the song went on, they they take a, a couple of quick moments and they have a, a quick bass showcase where he plays a couple of uh, riffs there with the bass, and then they have a little drum solo right in the middle, uh, kind of <laughs> harking back to Bytor and the Snow Dog or something, you know, where they take time to do that within the song, which I really dug. And then uh, Soulfly 11. I hope that's how you say it. It looks what it looks like. Beautiful song. Yeah. It definitely seemed out of place on this record, but I still loved it. And I couldn't help but notice. I can comment on that. You will in a moment. That's right. If, but the yeah. the first three notes <laughs> sounded like Metallica one. Did you guys notice that at all? Yeah, I, I, I thought the same yes, thing. Yes, I actually wrote that down. Yes. Yeah, that was so <laughs> cool. I really loved that part. But that's just that song itself is just a beautiful song. So. Uh, my score overall um, was a four out of five. 
Okay. So, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, the last thing I'll say because I want I do want Jeremy to to fill us all in is um, the feed the feed song feedback. I thought that I liked that song quite a bit, and I liked it because too it felt like something that they wrote. I mean, obviously they wrote on the road, you know, or just it sounded like it was about the life of being someone who has to tour and and do all of that stuff. And I and I could be completely wrong, but um. Yeah, so going, uh, it finished strong for me too with the feedback, and I totally agree with the whole Soulfly Eleven. And I did hear one, and Jeremy heard one, and now we need to hear Jeremy's full review. So, <laughs> Monday, you ready? Okay. So as Paul said, long, long, long history with uh, Max Cavalera and all of his different bands, uh, of which there are many. Um, uh, this lineup of Soulfly is pretty killer uh he's had mark rizzo on guitar i think he's had with him since the early 2000s and he's kind of become max's right hand man uh because he's in this band and he's in uh cavalera conspiracy which is max and his brother uh he's in rizzo is in that band as well and he is an amazing lead player he's fantastic guitar player uh, his solo stuff's really good, so check him out if you would like. And this is, I think, the second Soulfly album where Max's son Zion has been on drums. And I th- this album, I think he has improved quite a bit from the last album. Uh, which, I mean, he was already good, but I think he's he's definitely getting better. And he sh- he was able to showcase quite a bit on this one. So, uh, just looking through my notes here, um, uh, I think I told Paul the other day, I actually liked this album a little bit better than their last one, uh, which was still fine. I mean, Soulfly is Soulfly. It doesn't, they've changed a little over the years, but it's been gradual. And uh, they started out almost kind of, they had more of a new metal feel. Uh, but, and now they're, I mean, it's just Soulfly is kind of like the perfect expression of Max Cavalera. This is, it's mm-hmm. his vision, his baby. It's all, it's all Max. So, cool. but, uh, I do like this one better than the last one. It just kind of stays with me a little bit more. Uh, Ritual was an amazing opening track. I love, uh, you know, Max is from Brazil and he brings a lot of, the tribal stuff into his music. Uh, he uses a lot of, uh, uh, wow. Native instruments. Mm -hmm. And so that, that intro was, that was pretty typical. And just that opening riff is just killer. Just killer. Um, dead behind the eyes. Nobody mentioned that song. I have to mention that song because Randy Blythe from Lamb of God is amazing. (laughs) I'm a huge Lamb of God fan and Randy's voice is just fantastic. I love him and he's a good dude, which always helps. That makes me like him even more. And, uh, but yeah, that's a killer song. And it also, if you listen to Dead Behind the Eyes, it kind of touches on the the rhythms with the guitar riff. Is if you listen to a lot of Soulfly, you'll you'll keep hearing it over and over and over again. Is they kind of have this bounce to them. They kind of like if you're listening to it and your head starts bobbing, you can just see like when they're playing live, you can see the crowd bouncing up and down, and it's just. That's one of the things I love about Soulfly. Uh, The summoning, I loved uh, Mark Rizzo. He created some really good atmospheric stuff, like tons of layers in that song. Uh, The ending went a little electronic. That was kind of cool, kind of a different touch for Soulfly. Um, Evil Empowered was one of the songs they released early. Great song, has a sick breakdown towards the end. Really good. Uh, Under Rapture was pretty good. Uh, Ross Dolan is the guest vocalist. He's from a death metal band called Immolation. I'm not terribly familiar with. He sounds great on this song. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but under Rapture, that was a, it's a good example of the tempo changes that Soulfly will like to do. Just, you know, out of nowhere, the song will change on a dime. This one had a lot of punk feel. When they switched the riff up, it sound it had a very punk feel to it, which as Paul, you know, touched on there, kind of coming up with like listening to Dead Kennedys and all that old punk stuff. Um, the Blood on the Street, uh, I think Tony, you said something about that one. Yeah. Um, that one has a lot of the, the native instruments I was talking about. There's a lot of that in there and like, you know, so fly, they've done that a ton Mm -hmm. feedback, feedback. I wanted to touch on. (laughs) It's so cool. Uh, it sounds a lot different from the rest of the songs on the album. Mm -hmm. And immediately when the music started, I was like, this is a motorhead song. (laughs) I'm like, it, it, this feels like a song that Lemmy wrote and didn't get to record before he died. And Max picked it up and like put Max vocals on top of it. <laughs> so, but yeah. it, it sound it reminded me a lot of Motorhead. I could see And that. I actually wrote down that it's a uh, quick and balls to the wall. <laughs> so, which is pretty okay. much Motorhead. So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, um, sorry to cut you off. I was just going to say real, real, real quick. Um, no, that's a good point because I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was certainly uh, a familiar contrast from you know. A familiar... Oh, it's totally Motorhead. <laughs> yeah. Dude. So yeah. very cool. Nice, yeah. nicely done there. Oh, I wanted you. You went from Blood on the Streets to Feedback, so you kind of skipped bite the bullet a little bit. I know you said yeah. something, but who did the? I liked. I was listening to it. My notes say like. I really like the bass work in the middle. Like, uh, who's their bassist? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? I did not write his name down. It's not a guy that I'm familiar with. They have Soulfly has changed bass players a lot over the years. Okay. His name is and, Mike, Mike Leon. Yes, that's it. Okay. And he, I'm not familiar with him. I honestly could not tell you if he was on the last album or not. <laughs> uh, but they've changed. They've changed. Uh, bass players quite a few times. Yeah, apparently their former so, bassist had very unpleasant things to say about Cavalleras. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Any whatever. former somebody. Yeah, I was just yeah. looking up uh, who the current one was and that sure, popped up. I'm sure he wouldn't be the only one. <laughs> oh. what, so, what did you think of Bite the Bullet? Um, honestly, I did not make any notes about that song. Okay, sorry. I didn't so, put you on the spot there. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, I mean, it's. I didn't dislike it, but I, there wasn't anything that really stood out about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. it just sounded like it was just Soulfly. Right. I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, so enlighten us on Soulfly 11. You said you had some stuff to okay. say. Okay, so I know you guys aren't super familiar uh, on pretty much every Soulfly album the last track is a song called Soulfly. And uh, on the first one, it's just Soulfly, and then Soulfly 2, 3, 4, blah, blah, blah. So this is obviously Soulfly 11. And this one's actually a little different than the ones that have come before, which Paul mentioned the saxophone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> but they, they've always kind of been... Um, it's usually like a, an acoustic track, uh, mellow, and it really, what I love about it is it shows the diversity of the band and of Max's songwriting, and which he is a, he's huge into like uh, reggae and stuff like that, and he's also a huge pothead, but... Um, <laughs> So, but yeah, so they've always kind of ended their albums with the Soulfly track that kind of, you know, it's Soulfly is so brutal, like one through nine is just brutal, 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 Uh and just assaulting your senses in your face, aggressive. And then at the end, you have like this, it's almost like a cool down after a workout. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's the come down track. (laughs) And, uh. It's so, they're always good. And some of them are longer than others, but uh, they're always good. 
I really liked that. But and I did like w- one of the things I wrote down about it was I was that first those first notes I was like that's one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think everybody heard that, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's just a cool yeah. tradition that they've always kind of done, and it's nice to see that they're still changing even that up, adding yeah. the saxophone and stuff, and it sounded great. Have you ever listened to just the Soulfly songs lined up? No, you know what? That's funny because I've I've kind of thought about making a playlist of those, and I have not. I would like to though. Well, I guess that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Hey, I want to add something. I want to ask you guys a question. This really, and it's something similar. We've talked about in the past uh, allowing bands to change, follow the change, embrace you know, a a new direction for the band. One thing that I found interesting is with all sort of heavy bands, anytime they add anything new to their repertoire, any new sound, anything that isn't, as Jeremy just said, aggressive or in your face, it seems like the reviews always Uh just pan that. It's like they're not allowed to have anything that varies from this, you know, aggressive frontal assault um, and if they do, then suddenly they've sold out or something, yes. which I've always found kind of ridiculous because you right. can have both in the same song. Totally. Um, yeah. Have you guys noticed this at all? Yeah, I've always, I don't ever listen to critics. I don't, movies are the same way, you know, that's, you're going to like what you like. And I, I don't really, if, if I like it, I don't care what anybody else says about it. So I don't. I try not to listen to that kind of stuff. And metal is really bad about haters, and everybody wants their band to stay the same. And well, it's not your band, dude. You know. <laughs> so and people are gonna change. And Metallica is the best, or maybe the worst example of that. It's, you know, everybody wants Master of Puppets every time, and I'm like, these guys are, they're what? They're they're pushing sixty. They're mm-hmm. not the same guys, and, you know, it's just... I, haters are going to hate, I guess. <laughs> yeah. N- nice way to bring in a Taylor Swift reference there. <laughs> On the- yeah, I was, I was going to go back to Metallica. No, Metallica <laughs> was a prime example for me. I remember when Load and, and ultimately Reload came out, um, mm-hmm. it was certainly a different uh, a, a shift in what they had done before. Um, at the time, I felt like maybe I was a little disappointed, but... Uh, uh, it was still, you know, great records. But um, at the time too, I was playing guitar in a different way, and and I was still kind of developing who I was musically and and what I sounded like. So I was mm-hmm. used to kind of what the Black Album sounded like. There was a lot of, uh, you know, not to get too into it, but a lot of processing and and some um, uh, like chorus and some richer effects to really mm-hmm. kind of layer the sound. And right. Metallica went more raw. I mean, it was just hearty tone and that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. and uh, after taking a break and then coming back and listening to it, it it definitely I embraced it a lot further. Just just good, real raw guitar and and just great grooves. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, you know, it, I think what happens with with metal too is yeah, the the fan might be a little jarred by it and and uh, have a little frustration, but over time when they come back to it, I think uh, at least for me, there's certainly a, a level of appreciation that I can revisit it and, and uh, enjoy it for, for that merit, just because of the fact that, you know, it is a change. The band is still evolving and we, we all are in life. And, and I think that's the ultimate metaphor there. If an artist doesn't evolve, what's going on with the rest of life, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a very valid point, but uh, you know, m- not many people are riding the save, same, same wave, as that artist so yeah. it's just a matter of you know keep you know catch up or uh-huh. go go catch another wave i have a great example of that uh mm-hmm. um you're talking about how fans come back to it later and appreciate it uh judas priest actually is a perfect example is they have a song called uh i don't i don't remember if the song's called turbo or turbo lover uh-huh. but when that came out Oh my gosh, Judas Priest fans hated it and it was so poppy and it it sucks and it's not metal and <laughs> but now when they play that song everybody sings that song. Everybody loves that song cuz it's a good song. Right. They but it was yeah. different at the time and they just, you know, they didn't like it. So Hey Rob Halford, remember that new sound you're looking for? 
<laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> and should I bring up that that Rob Halfer also went solo on Trent's label, Nothing Records? He wasn't exactly solo, and actually, <laughs> his guitar player was John Five. Oh, that's who right. Is now, yes. yes, he went Steve. by John Lowry at the time. Steve, we got an actually there from somebody else. Actually. <laughs> I, just, I just sent him a meme about that earlier today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Tony, I was just curious. Um, you mentioned Trent Reznor. Who's he? Uh, what group's he associated with? A little band called Nine Inch Nails from the 80s. Drink up, there folks. You. We no. hadn't had one yet. No. Had we? Yeah. No, we did. But I think we did. One thing real quick before Dang we it. get to, I do want to hear uh, Jeremy's actual like number review uh what he gave the whole album but when you guys are talking about the art thing i think it's interesting because going back to fine artists like picasso and if you talk about even modern day people in different fields like actors like jim carrey trying to break from ace venture and do something a little bit more different or whatever it is Mm -hmm. it's like there's this like window of time where people pick that period that they were creating and they're like that's who they are you know that's what it's almost like the, the people with the eyes are the ones deciding that that's who those people are. And these people were doing something different before and they're doing something different after, but we just hold on to the thing that we like. So I think artists are always evolving and um, they're just going to hit, they're going to strike gold once in a while and hopefully just keep moving. And if they're making art for themselves, then they'll be happy the whole way through. Yep. Oh, show. All right, Jeremy. Uh, I, uh, my number rating, it would take a lot for me to give something a perfect rating. And I I don't think this was close to that. I, I would have given it, I would give it probably a four. Okay. It's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. I will listen to it probably several, several times, but yeah, I would say four. Do you have a favorite Soulfly album? Uh, one I go back to a lot is, uh, it's called Conquer. Okay. And I don't remember what year that came out. I want to say it was around, somewhere around 07 or 09, somewhere in there. But, uh, that's a great one. Cool. I was going to say, I actually, I like, uh, some of, (laughs) some of his other bands better than Soulfly, so... (laughs) Okay. My question was going to be, and we talked about this before too, instead of just giving number ratings, will you in the future, a couple years down the road, go back to this album and listen again? Oh, I absolutely will. I I think it's great. All right, there you go. That's kind of what we've been talking about with discovering all of this new music. Like last week we did 21 Pilots. We uncovered some really cool stuff about it. But, um, you know, going in, it wasn't wasn't (laughs) something that we all love that style of music so going in i thought there's no way i'm gonna listen to this again you know but uh perhaps now i might so yeah and i we we don't have time to talk about it but i will say and that's why jeremy i want you to give me like a starter pack of uh to listen to um i've been listening to 21 pilots since our last episode and my rating would be higher this week if we were to get back into it and so you know i'm open so send me some stuff Sweet. All right. Well, that brings us to the new challenge of the week, and we're going to let Metalhead Monday issue the challenge for next week. So uh, what do you have? Okay. I don't know how uh, lame or cool this will be, but this is the first thing that popped into my head. Um, I am a huge fan of holding down the low end. I love a great, great rhythm section, bass and drums, Mm -hmm. holding it together. I think that's the foundation of, uh, I mean, obviously if you're talking about electronic music, maybe not so much, but you still have, you know, the program drums and the bass line, whatever, but with live music, bass and drums, man, they keep it together. And so I was just curious as to what everyone's favorite rhythm section of all time would be. Well, I, I assume we should have you back since you issued the challenge. Well, yeah. that's up to you guys. I think we all know that I could go right now. <laughs> yes. I See, do. that's what I said. Yeah. I called it. Yes. There's going to be a lot of drinking next week. <laughs> that's right. I was going to say, ladies and gentlemen, Steve's favorite rhythm section is raisin number two and raisin number three of the California raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Paul. You ruined it. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. 
<laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, that is an exciting challenge um, to find out what you other three like. So uh, <laughs> uh, that that will be cool. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, next week I will surprise you all and not pick them. Or not. <laughs> That's right. not going to happen. I already did it this week. You guys should be proud of me. You did good. <laughs> yeah. I know. I didn't do Star Wars. So, All right. So let's do, uh, let's do a little round table right here, and let's go around the table. And uh, what are we listening to, or what is, uh, what's going on that's cool right now? Uh, JPP, what's up? I, uh, well, because we were going through disappointing albums last week, uh, Tony had mentioned uh, some of the Bob Mould journey. I listened to his latest album and absolutely loved it. Great guitar tone that was on in the background while I was working. And it also got me in the mood because the guitar style had a lot of open voicing. Uh, I listened to uh, Quicksand's latest, latest release. It came out in 2017. Uh, it is called... Um, well, the, let's see. Illuminate is the name of the album. There's a song on there in particular called Cosmonauts that's just really nice and uh, open and airy and, and just driving at the same time. I would highly recommend them. If you've never heard Quicksand from, from the 90s, their debut album Slip was fantastic. Mundy and I had the honor of seeing them live. Was that with uh, Anthrax and Biohazard? Uh... Was it not? Was it White Zombie and Anthrax? It might have been White Zombie and Anthrax, yeah, because it was Sepultura and Biohazard that we saw yes. in the same lineup. That's right. So, yeah, uh, great band, highly underrated in my opinion. Um, they were out for a while and, and weren't doing anything, but they're back with a vengeance. So that's my top pick. Cool. All right. Uh, T-Bags, what you got? Okay. Um, well, since you guys sent uh, – Steve, I think you sent the meme of uh, – Marilyn Manson looks like Nicolas Cage dressed up as Marilyn Manson. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it made me feel kind of bad because I used to love Marilyn Manson so much. And I was like, well, let me go back and listen to when I felt like he was good. And so uh, I've been listening to Coma White and Deformography a lot um, and, by Marilyn Manson. And so those were my nostalgic picks. And then uh, the two other tracks that I'm listening to is one called Alone by Dark Horses and Slip Away by Perfume Genius. Two totally different tracks. That inspires me. Um, should I attempt Nicolas Cage singing Marilyn Manson? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, the beautiful people. The beautiful people. <laughs> That's going to be the new intro. New segment. <laughs> new, no, intro. No, segment. Segment every week. Nicholas K is doing something. <laughs> okay. That's all I got. What do you got, Stevie? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't have anything that cool. Um, actually, I, I didn't listen to much this week uh, outside of Soulfly, um, but Daredevil did drop on Netflix, so uh, I got a couple episodes in. Pretty excited about that. Um, I was going to write a review uh, for Break the Fourth, where I do write, but everybody just binges everything. So most people have probably already watched all 13 episodes, and I like to savor it a little bit. It's my favorite character, so I don't want to just bust it all out in one night. So I've only watched a couple episodes, but um, so far, it's been really cool. Um, looks like he, he's back with his uh, mother, the nun. Of course, he doesn't know that she's his mom, and uh, they have a long discussion about Job and in the Bible and uh, his role, he feels kind of like Job and all that. And he's, he's lashing out. So it's been really cool so far. Really excited to see where this goes. The Kingpin is back. And uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, as you probably all know, is amazing Very as good. the Kingpin needs to hit the cinematic universe at some point. Um, so that's, that's where I've been. Uh, amazing. Can't wait to see how this thing ends. And uh, hopefully Electra will return at some point as well. We'll see, but that's it. No, uh, no new music for me this week. Just Daredevil. Got you. Monday? Monday. Well, I could make up for that a little bit. Uh, first, I have to thank Tony because Night Riots, nothing personal. Holy crap. <laughs> that song is amazing. I agree. Oh, yes. my God. It's so good. So good. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, the video is really cool, too, but the song is so good. I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm working. Uh, I listen to that more than music, but one of the ones I listen to is uh, Jamie Josta, who's the singer of Hatebreed, and he's been talking about this band Cult Leader, and uh, one of their songs is called I Am Healed, and man, it is just like brutal, brutal mm. death metal, and the guys, 
I'm very picky about my death metal vocals, which probably sounds weird to people that don't listen to death metal. <laughs> but this dude is amazing. He's just really low, which is what I like. I don't like the screamy high stuff. I like the low, guttural. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very solid song. Solid song. Um, I really, I've been, I kind of stumbled across a band called Bones. And if you're looking them up, uh, most of their stuff is under Bones UK. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're British. Um, It's kind of fronted by two women who both play guitar. One of them sings. Uh, They have a drummer and they have like some electronic elements. And man, they're good. It's just like gritty, sexy, like mean rock and roll stuff and man it's good one of my favorites from them is it's a song called beautiful is boring (laughs) and i would recommend watching the regular video and then there's a live video of them performing that that is absolutely stellar they do a great cover of i'm afraid of americans by bowie sweet Mm -hmm. It, it, it i would yeah find that one and there's a song called Girls Can't Play Guitar on which one of the girls commences to shred the hell out of her <laughs> guitar. And uh, they're, they're just re- they're really good. And it's just like down and dirty, sexy rock and roll. And it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. I think uh, a couple episodes ago, Bones was one of my pretty waste. Is that the same band? Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great song, too. Yeah, so I dig them so much. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't heard. All, awesome. I haven't heard all of the. You know, I, I kind of throw stuff in playlists, and I don't necessarily go back and listen to all those. So yeah. there's a couple of those that you said I haven't heard, so I'm definitely gonna check that out. Well, yeah, they're kind of hard to. I don't know. Like, there's different stuff on YouTube and Spotify, mm-hmm. and they don't have any albums on Spotify. It's all singles. Right. So, and there's not very many, but they're good. What's up? There's good. And you'll be contributing uh, to show notes, right? I hope so. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Sweet. Uh, I had one last thing. Somebody I found on YouTube just by accident. And I don't know how to say this guy's name. Probably going to mess it up. Mm -hmm. I think it is Adi Kairat. It's A-H-D-Y K-H-A-I-R-A-T. So... But he does... I think you uh, got it right. Yeah. He does remixes. And what I stumbled into was he did a lot of remixes of Metallica songs from Injustice for All. And what Injustice for All is very famous for is they turned the bass down or off completely. So there's no bass guitar on it. And the Uh drums are horribly thin like paper thin so Mm -hmm. he just kind of took all these songs from injustice for all and modernized them and just beefed them up threw the bass in there and i've heard some mixes where the bass is kind of crazy but this it fits it's in the pocket sounds great uh he fixed the drum sounds a little bit they I don't know how he did it. I'm not a producer, but the drums, they sound better and beefier, but they don't really sound different. So I'm not <laughs> sure how that works, but whatever. <laughs> Paul. But <laughs> technical. Well, <laughs> start, yeah. actually. start drinking, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so. That guy's good. He does. He remixes a lot of other stuff too. But I was really focused on the stuff from Justice because I knew there was going to be bass in there, and it says, sounds great. So, awesome. I'm done. Awesome. There's a YouTube video just titled "Injustice for Jason," where they turned the bass up essentially. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that pretty much uh, does it for the show. Um, Paul, where can we find you? Um, I, you can find me at justplainpaul.com. You can find me on Facebook at JPP Invasion. If you get on any of the other social media portals out there, just type Just Plain Paul on one wor- all one word. Chances are it'll be me. Awesome. Metalhead, where can we find you? 
Uh, you can contact me directly at longhairmundy at gmail.com or find me on Facebook, just Jeremy Mundy, M-U-N-D-Y. Sweet. Teabags, where you at? Uh, I don't really want to be found this week, so <laughs> just, <laughs> just put a comment on Facebook. I'll get back to you. <laughs> We yeah. he's still mad and he's uh, still mad that uh, <laughs> he ate all the pigeons. I <laughs> know. Well, I don't get any more. So <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, you can find me Foggy's pal on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, over at breakthefourth.com. Uh, thank you all for listening this week. Had a nice show with our guest Metalhead Monday, and uh, he'll be back next week. Two time guest, and we'll be uh, tackling his challenge, which is uh, your favorite or best rhythm section. So until then, we'll see you next week. Hey peeps, the Wanderings and Wool Gathering podcast is now on iTunes. Give us a review and rating there. We would love your feedback on the show. Also, if you're on Facebook, you can find us at Wanderings and Wool Gathering. Please like, comment, and share the content with your friends. And on YouTube, you can hit that subscribe button, like, and comment as well. We would love your feedback in regards to the topics we cover in the show, including your own suggestions for review. There's lots of music out there, and we would love to talk about it. Thanks again for listening, and we will catch you next week. 